Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to do a change detection analysis using Landsat 8 images corresponding to the forest fire incidents which occurred in Australia during the final months of year 2019 and which progressed all the way up to the first couple of months of year 2020. Now, as you can see over here, I have one image which corresponds to September 2019. And on top of that, I have another image which corresponds to April 2020 and from these two images you can clearly see there is a difference in terms of the amount of vegetation over this area of interest and in this tutorial I'm going to show you not only how to do a visual inspection of these kind of differences but also to do a classification in order to identify those areas which were actually destroyed due to the forest fires and to calculate the corresponding area in terms of uh, square kilometers to identify how much of an area which got destroyed due to the fires. This technique can also be applied to other scenarios as well, but, but for this tutorial, as an example, I'm only going to use this method in order to detect the changes which were caused by the Australian bushfires. So without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do a change detection analysis uh, using Landsat images for a particular case. So the case which I'm going to choose as an example to demonstrate in this tutorial is the is the Australian wildfires which occurred during the last stages of year 2019 and progressed all the way up until the first couple of months of uh, 2020. And if you have been following the news, a massive amount of forested area was actually completely destroyed, including the wildlife as well. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to acquire two images, two Landsat images, which corresponds to before and after the incident and we're going to find out the area which basically uh, was subjected to bushfires or forest fires and try to calculate the area to sort of get an idea about the the amount of destruction which has which was caused due to the fire even though ideally i would do this for the whole, for the entire country to identify the areas which were sort of burned out during the fires i'm just going to restrict myself uh, only to this southeastern part of australia which is quite close to these uh, cities like Melbourne and Canberra so that we don't have to worry about uh, handling a massive amount of data. Instead, I can quickly demonstrate to you guys how, how this change and change detection analysis can be done uh, using these Landsat images. All right, so what you would ideally do is you first have to sort of uh, specify the area over here like this. Over here, you can set the date range and uh, assuming that you set the date range let's say we go to the data sets and from here you can go to landsat open this landsat collection one level one and from here i'm going to select landsat eight and then i'm i'm also going to set some additional criteria uh, especially pertaining to the amount of cloud cover and from here you also have the possibility to request for a for an image which has a certain which has a certain cloud cover I'm just going to select less than 90% for both land cloud cover and scene cloud cover and uh, we can click on the results and it will actually generate to you some results. Now from here you have to just scroll around and see uh, which one would potentially fit your purpose. Now for example you can see the dates over here. Now if you would like to see where each, each one of these tiles would fit in this real map what you can do is you can just uh, activate this footprint like this. So the footprint only shows you the area which is covered by that particular tile. But, but if you'd like to get a quick visualization of the image itself, you can click on this show browse overlay and that will take you to the real Landsat image like this. So for my purpose, I have downloaded this one of these images which actually covers this, this particular range in Australia, as you can see from this image yeah from here you can also see the coverage in a bit of a detailed way and i have downloaded two of these images from september 2019 and april 2020 so that we can actually do a comparison before and after the initiation of the fire all right so now let me go ahead and open arcmap and import these two images yeah as you can see over here i have two folders in the september 2019 folder i have i have the bands which i have downloaded from corresponding to that particular Landsat image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import only the bands from number one up to seven, and I'm going to add this. And then from this, I can actually create one composite image, 
because that's what I'm going to work with. So in order to create a composite image, I can go to this Windows and Image Analysis. And from here, you can make sure that you select all the images. And then you can go over here to create the composite composite band. All right, after you create the composite band, you can basically get rid of the, the individual bands. And now if I, let's say, flip these bands to 432, that that will result in the true color image, as you can see over here, which is not really quite clear. So now if your objective is to sort of distinguish between the land and water bodies, of course, one band combination which you can use is the 564 band combination, which is this one. And from here, you can very clearly identify where the water bodies are where and where the land areas are. But our objective is actually not to particularly do that, but to do sort of a vegetation analysis means I'm going to try to find out the areas which has vegetation and which doesn't have a vegetation anymore due to the due to the fire events. So for that, a well-known band combination uh, we can use in order to do that that kind of a vegetation analysis is 654. So I'm going to go over here and activate this 654 band combination. And from this image, you can sort of get an idea which has kind of dense vegetation and the areas which appears to be sort of barren lands. All right, so similarly, what I can do is I can go ahead and download the other image as well, which corresponds to April 2020. Again, similarly, I'm going to download the seven bands. And again, I'm going to go to Windows Image Analysis. And this time I'm going to select all the seven bands corresponding to April 2020 image. And I'm going to create this composite image again. All right, after that, I can get rid of this. All right, now if I flip back the band combination to be five, six, five, four, and now you can see that on top, I have the, the corresponding image of April 2020. And, and at the bottom, I have the image of September 2019. And now what I can do is I can go to this image analysis panel and I can select the top image and I can use this swipe layer tool in order to sort of swipe the top layer out so that we can visually see what sort of a change which has occurred over here. Now you can see that in the bottom image, the areas which appear to be of very dense vegetation has completely been sort of uh, burned out. You can see especially this, this area, if I swipe the image again, you can see that a huge amount of vegetated area has been completely been destroyed. Similarly, if I check this side, you can see that the vegetated area has completely been, a majority of the vegetated area has completely been sort of wiped off due to the fires. This kind of a change detection is just a visual change detection. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the difference of the two rasters. So before that, let me go ahead and clip this raster, these two rasters into the into my area of interest. Now I also have another shape file which which is this study area. So I'm going to import this first. So my study area is confined only to this region. So let me go ahead and clip these two different composite bands to the level of my area of interest. So for that, I can just go to the search panel. I can say clip and I can go to clip data management. And from here, first I'm going to drag and drop the composite band image corresponding to September, 2019. Specify the output extent, which is the study area. And I'm going to take this use input features for clipping geometry. And let me go ahead and save the output raster, September, 2019.tiff All right, now you can see that the composite image was clipped according to the, my provided boundaries. So I'm going to go, go ahead and get rid of this 2019 composite image with the full coverage. And similarly, I'm going to do the same thing for the 2020 April image as well. So let me go ahead and select the study area over here.
And while we're at it, you can see that once we do the clipping, the band combination again gets flipped to band 1, 2, 3. So later on, I'm going to flip them back again to 6, 5, 4 band combination, which is quite good for in terms of vegetation analysis. All right, now I can go ahead and remove this. Now, as you can see on top, it's the April 2020 image and on bottom, it's the September 2019 image. So let me go ahead and flip this back to being 6. Five, four, and similarly over here it's six, five, and four. All right. Again, if you would like to do a quick visual comparison, what you can do is you can always activate this image analysis panel, and from here you can select the top image, and you can take the swipe layer tool, and you can sort of swipe it out, and you can see in the bottom layer how dense the vegetation was before and what sort of an impact which has been happened which has happened due to the due to the fire events all right now as i told you since this is this was just a visual comparison what we can do is we, we can also create one composite image which has the difference between these two images so in order to do that what you can do is you can select the two images and you can go to this tool over here which computes the change between the two selected layers using a pixel over pixel comparison and creates a temporary layer. Now let's click on this. Just make sure that you have selected the two layers over here. And when you click on this, it'll actually create, it'll generate a pixel by pixel difference layer. As you can see over here, this is the layer which corresponds to the difference. All right, now on top you have the difference layer. Now, if I again flip back the, the band combinations to B, 6, 5 and 4, and for the time being, let me go ahead and switch off this difference layer. Now, what you have over here is the image which corresponds to April 2020, which means after the event. And if I swipe this out, you can see the image which corresponds to September 2019, which is basically before the fire event. Now, just focus your attention onto some areas which was destroyed due to the fires. For example, let's see, we, we will have a look at this area. And if I swipe, you can see that previously there was vegetation over there and then now there, are, there isn't any vegetation over here. So now when I activate this difference layer, see what sort of a color attribution you actually get for those kind of areas where the difference is actually quite high, which means it's been now sort of highlighted in this sort of pink shade in this difference image. But the other areas where the, the color appears to be sort of, sort of different shades of green, you can attribute them to be areas where the, where the change was not that prominent, which, which means once we calculate this difference raster, difference composite image, these areas are not recognized as areas where the change has occurred. Now, what we can do is just keep in mind that on the bottom we have the April 2020 layer and on top we have the difference layer. Now if I swipe out the difference layer so that it'll be clear for you guys, you can see that these areas which has been burned out in the difference layer has been highlighted in sort of a pink shade. But the areas where still the vegetation is present, you can see that that one appears in sort of a green color. So I guess you got the basic idea how to interpret this difference image. Now what we can do is since we have this difference image now, if you want to sort of calculate the areas which got burnt due to the fires, you can actually perform a simple classification. Now you can either do a, a supervised classification or you can opt to do a unsupervised classification. Now in this case, I'm just going to go with having an unsupervised classification because it's a bit faster. And to perform an unsupervised classification, all you have to do is you can go to this classification tab over here. And in case if you don't have this one, just right click somewhere over here and make sure you activate this image classification option. And from here, just make sure that you are selecting the difference layer and you can go to classification and you can go to ISO cluster unsupervised classification. Now over here, you, what you can do is you can select a number of classes. Now this number of classes will be generated based on the, sp on the spectral signatures of that particular image. Now it might be good to actually have a higher number of classes rather than having a lower number of classes so that later on you can group the classes together based on your own judgment as well. But to begin with maybe let me go ahead and put only around 5 classes and let me go ahead and run this. 
now if I deactivate this and if I only use this ISO cluster and if I do a swipe now during the comparison what you can do is you can check what sort of colors have been attributed to these areas with the difference now you can see that mostly this red color has been attributed to the areas with the difference and over here you can see that there are certain areas where even this dark purple color has also been attributed to the areas with a difference now just to be on the safe side what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to increase the number of classes which gets generated during this unsupervised classification let me put the number of classes to 10 now the trick would be to use this swipe tool in order to identify the different classes which has been assigned to areas which has the highest difference so that you have to do by comparing the previous difference image with this classified image with this classified uh, raster so now what I can do is I can see that this area particularly has been assigned with green color which corresponds to the class number three so just keep in mind that it, the area which got, got burned can be represented in a number of classes so that's what we are going to do we are going to identify which classes have been assigned now I can also see that this dark this light blue color has also been assigned which is given by the class number five so so far we identified class number three and five actually represents the burnt out areas and let me check let me go ahead and see whether another color another class has been assigned to a non burnt area based on the difference image I think I can confidently say that class number eight also corresponds to the areas which has the highest difference based on the based on the difference composite image so I'm going to pick class number three five and eight to be the representative to be the representative classes which shows the diff areas with the highest difference which eventually corresponds to the burnt out areas now you can also zoom in and then do a much better job of comparing these areas now to my judgment I can say that even these areas with sort of this dark purple color also can be attributed to these areas with highest difference which corresponds to class number seven so right now we have identified cl uh, four classes class number three five eight and seven now let me go ahead and check whether it can provide us with sort of a different indication or not I think we for the purposes of this tutorial we can more or less say that these class numbers three five eight and seven sort of represents the areas with the highest difference in terms of this difference image which eventually corresponds to the areas with, which can be attributed as which can be attributed to the burnt out areas so now what I can do is I can actually use the raster calculator in order to sort of group all of these rasters into one classified image so in order to do that I can say I can first open the raster calculator and I can select this ISO cluster 4 which is equal to class number three and we can say or this iso cluster three which is equal to class number five or which is equal to class number eight or which is equal to class number seven now what we try to do is we actually try to sort of group all these classes together which has the which corresponds to class number three five eight and seven yeah when you set the equal just make sure that you set the equal sign to be equal equals and from here you can just go ahead and click OK all right now you can see that we generated one raster with only two classes now this class number zero refers to the areas with basically no or less change corresponding corresponding to this difference composite image and this areas with this purple color corresponds to the regions which had the highest difference and based on the class combination which we provided which is classes 3, 5, 8 and 7 it has grouped all those areas which corresponds to those classes together and it has presented us with this final image now what I can do is I can maybe switch off this and open this April 2020 image and maybe I can do another quick comparison 
just to make sure that just to visually inspect how this one looks yeah now you can see that it's more or less there but to make it a bit more clear what i can do is i can actually get rid of this green color area and only keep this purple color areas now either you can go ahead and reclassify this image but visually if you would only like to maybe get rid of the fill color of this now you can see quite clearly that and let me go ahead and assign maybe a different color to this one something like this yeah and now you can see that we more or less managed to do quite an all right job in in determining the burned out areas but still you can see that if you go to certain areas these areas have been have not been identified as the burned out areas so and one way you can improve your classification is just by increasing the number of classes and then do a much better job in inspecting and then you can group those each of those classes which corresponds to a different spectral signatures into one group which can solve these kind of uh, inaccuracies but i guess for this tutorial only for the demonstration purposes i think this is good enough all right so now let's go ahead and calculate the area corresponding to this now in order to calculate the area what you can do is you can export this raster into a polygon so you can say raster to polygon and from here you can select this and one quick way to sort of make sure that you only export the areas which corresponds to these burned out regions you can go over here and you can just make sure that you select only the areas which corresponds to that burned out regions and then uh, do the exporting yeah now you can see that the polygon which got exported now corresponds only to these burnt out regions if you open this now you can see that it's actually of the type polygon as you can see here there are certain regions actually which does not correspond to the actual burnt out areas such as this one so i'm just going to manually go ahead and remove these kind of areas so for that what you can do is you can go to edit and then you can select these areas which corresponds to this polygon and i can just go ahead and delete that one and after that you can go to editor and stop editing and save your edits all right then if you want to group everything together you can see that everything has been assigned the grid code number one so we can group everything based on this assigned grid code number one you can go to geoprocessing and you can select dissolve and you can select grid code over here and that will basically dissolve all these individual polygons into one single polygon just like this now you can see that the shape area has already been calculated for you guys but if you would like to maybe calculate it in a different unit what you can do is you can create another column and you can right click on it go to calculate geometry and you can actually calculate the geometry now you can see that the coordinate system is already in projected coordinate system so you don't have to worry about calculations being done in decimal degrees so I'm just going to select square kilometers and click OK and now over here you can see that an area uh, based on our classification the burned out area actually corresponds to an area of about 1137 square kilometers across this area of our interest all right so that's actually one way of uh, performing your change detection analysis so it's quite a simple and a straightforward method but I guess you got the basic idea and uh, if you do have any questions regarding the steps that we followed in this tutorial you can always comment them down below and uh, we can discuss those issues in the comments thread. So that concludes the tutorial for today. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in a couple of days with the next tutorial.